Here comes the sun. Do 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 do. Here comes the sun. Do 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 do. everyone um, today's video is quite a bit different from what I have done so far but it's something that I need to share so Revelation 12 11 says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and I thoroughly believe that I believe that we overcome when we share the goodness that God has done in our lives and I believe that we continue to overcome the more that we share. Okay, so starting the testimony about a year ago, a little over a year ago in January of 2018, January, February, I got sick with the flu. The flu, it's just, you know, it's terrible. You feel terrible with the flu. You're just sick until you're not sick with the flu. But while I was sick, I developed these incredibly intense throbbing headaches that would shut down everything I tried to do. I just had to stop and wait for it to pass. It didn't last very long, um, but it was incredibly painful for the time that it did last. So I got over the flu, I was healthy again, but the headaches did not leave. I couldn't do anything. So this is the severity of the headaches. Any movement, I would turn around in the car to look at my daughter in her car seat to check on her and I would get that headache. And I would just like squeeze my eyes really tight and clench my fists and just wait for it to end. Um, I would bend over to get my dog some food and I would get the headache. I would reach up to turn the ceiling fan on or off or something like that and I would get that throbbing headache. So Matthew grew concerned that it was something very, very severe, something bad. So we made our trip to the emergency room, I believe. And they listened to my symptoms and they ran some tests and they came back and said, we can't be for sure, but we believe you have a Chiari malformation. So of course we asked, you know, what is that? <laughs> Who knows what that is, you know? They began to tell us in layman's terms, basically a Chiari malformation is where the bottom of your brain or your brain stem herniates through the base of your skull into your spine, causing intense pressure, headaches. It can cause issues with your spinal fluid and cause you major, major problems. They said you need to follow up with a neurologist. So I did. They then had me do an MRI, which confirmed that I did have a Chiari malformation and so he ran a bunch of physical tests on me to make sure my reactions, what I felt, everything was normal, and it was normal. So he said, there is nothing further that I can do. I have to refer you to a neurosurgeon. So I went to the neurosurgeon. And Matthew says this was the worst day of his life. It was very scary. So we go to the neurosurgeon and he reviews my MRI pictures. He asks me my symptoms. We go over everything and he tells us the risks of a Chiari malformation. It can cause, um, and I don't know the exact medical terms, I'm not even gonna pretend I do, 
It can cause issues with your movements. It can shut you down physically um, where you can't move or you can't speak. It can cause a lot of issues and basically that he thought the only way to overcome this and the only way to have a normal life was brain surgery. So we started asking him about the surgery and they go in, they remove the bottom part of your skull, they take out the dura, which is the protective layer over your brain, so they can make room for the herniated part of your brain so that it'll relieve the pressure, everything can function normally. Well, that's very scary, no one wants to have that surgery. We ask him, has he ever done the surgery? And he says, yes, I've done it several times. And of course we ask him, has there ever been any negative results from that surgery? And there had been, he said there was one time out of all the several times he's done uh, the surgery that a girl came out of surgery, surgery went great, but her brain started swelling after surgery unexplainably. Um, he had done nothing to cause it, but she did die. And we were just, I mean, what kind of response do you have in that situation? Shock, no, I'm not gonna have this surgery. There has to be another option. What can we do? We don't, I mean, this is scary. So he wants to basically, let's go ahead and set it up right now. And Matthew and I were not on board with that. The drive home that day was very emotional, to say the least. We didn't know what to do. It was a very scary situation. So we, uh, we just turned to God in that time and trusted him. We told my in-laws, my husband's parents are evangelists and they travel all over America preaching at different ch churches. And we asked them to pray. We asked my parents to pray. One night, <laughs> I was driving home from work and I got off, it was very late at night, probably close to midnight. And I was just singing worship music in the car just taking that time, I had a 40, 45 minute drive, just taking that time to really enjoy the, the silence and be with God in, in an intimate setting. And I remember exactly where I was on the road. I had stopped at a stop sign where I would turn onto the highway, which was very close to where I lived at the time. And I remember it like it just happened just now. All of a sudden, I felt something move in the back of my head. And I felt this tingling sensation. And my immediate thought and my immediate feeling was, oh my gosh, my arms are going numb. And I thought, this is it. Something's wrong. I... I'm not going to come back from this. I was freaking out in the car. I'm in this moment of panic sitting at the stop sign. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I can't move my arms. And then I hear this voice and it said to me, Cassie, it's not what's wrong. It's what's been made right. And I wanted to start bawling right then and there. Ever since that day, I have not had that pain ever. It's gone, completely gone. And it's incredible. So something else cool that happened during that time, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were at a revival that he was preaching. So I called her a few days later after that had happened and I told her about it. And it turns out that night they were in revival and they were praying. They had the whole church praying for me. And one of the pastors of the church that they were at stopped my mother-in-law and said, I just want you to know I feel like God just told me that he's healing your daughter-in-law right now. And we, 
It's just crazy how God works. I just, I feel like people need to know this. I feel like people need to know the goodness of God. I feel like I need to share my testimony so that other people can have victory. And I want to say this. During this time, I learned everything you could ever know about a Chiari malformation. I was an expert on it. I knew what it could do to you. I knew what it could cause you to go through. I knew the, the way that it could be helped. I knew the different options. I knew all of this stuff. I knew that there's special pillows that you could buy that would possibly help with the symptoms. And I knew there were special diets you could do that may help with the symptoms. I researched and researched and researched. And while there's nothing wrong with being informed, I think there is something wrong with investigating and learning your illness so much so that you can no longer look to God for help. My point in all of this is saying, stop learning so much about your sickness. Learn more about God. Learn more about who he is in his word, what Jesus did, who he healed, how he healed them. Learn about those things. And I'm not saying, obviously, when I was healed, I was not doing those things. I was still in a big place of terror. But if I could encourage you today, I would say, don't allow the devil to sneak in with these lies to you. God is good. God will heal you. And all you need to do is believe him. That's all you need to do. One thing I do want to say is that uh, my pastor um, spoke on healing at church on Sunday. And he said there's three different types of healing. There is natural healing, where here now, you know, whether it be vitamins, supplements, holistic medicine, um, doctors, medication, there that's a form of healing. And he pointed out, how do you think that a doctor has this knowledge? God made the human brain. God designed us to be able to learn things, to make things. So that's God healing. There's supernaturally, which is what I experienced, where Jesus comes in and supernaturally heals you. And there's eternal healing. He gave the story of how his brother was paralyzed and he watched in a service one day. Jesus supernaturally healed his brother and he got out of his wheelchair and could walk. That's the supernatural healing. And then just three years ago, I believe he said, his brother died from cancer and he experienced eternal healing. Even though he had cancer and cancer took his life, he's now with Jesus and is eternally healed. So he went on to say he can't explain, obviously, why some people would receive supernatural healings here and some people receive eternal healings with Jesus. That's not something that I can explain. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But I do know that God is good and that he healed me and that I am so thankful. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much. Bye.